untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl game video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green ramp deck featuring the Goose Mother as our commander, X a blue and a green for a 2-2 flyer that enters with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it and also creates half of X food tokens around it up. And then whenever the Goose Mother attacks we may sacrifice a food if we do draw a card. So the Goose Mother is totally fine to play early if we don't have anything else going on but is also an excellent mana sink once we ramp into some more mana and I've split up the deck into a few categories, but most of it is ramp. We've got lots of great 1 and 2 mana ramp options. At 3 mana, cards that often generate more than 1 mana as well. And then at 4 and 5 mana, we also have some more nice options available. And then we get to some of our card draw effects. Hydroid Craces, another nice mana sink, similar to the Goose Mother. And then we've got cards like the Last March of the Ends, Rishkar's Expertise, which can also draw us a ton of cards after making a huge Goose Mother. And then we've got some blue cards, which include some bounce effects to try and control the board a little bit. And some ways to take extra turns can also be quite nice with the Goose Mother, drawing us extra cards while it gets to attack an extra turn. And then we've got some additional green finishers, also giving us a bit of interaction, ways to destroy opposing permanents. So that's kind of the deck in a nutshell. Not going to go too much into detail when it comes to the 1 and 2 mana ramp options, since you've probably seen these a million times before. But at 3 mana we still have Cultivate, Rejuvenator as another cheap creature that can find a land, Gwenna taps to make 2 mana to cast creature spells, and then can also maybe untap after casting a larger creature. We've got Harrow sacrificing a land, getting 2 more untapped, great at enabling a landfall on a few of our cards. And then there's a Somber Vault Sage tapping for 3 mana that we can only spend on creature spells, so totally fine for most of our curve toppers. Tireless Provisioner, one of our landfall payoff cards, making treasure tokens typically, but the food tokens can also synergize with our Goose Mother. We've got Silvala, which can also generate a ton of extra mana, potentially draw a few extra cards as well. Kiora can also be quite nice with some of our enchantments, such as Utopia Sprawl or Wolf Willow Haven, making additional mana. Can also maybe untap our Nykthos to give us a nice mana boost, much like in the Green Devotion decks. Then there's the Engineer making 2 mana. Troyan also makes 2 mana, can also help us draw and discard if we're flooding a bit. And then the Statuary also has great synergy with the Goose Mother, since we'll generate a ton of food tokens that can then turn into extra mana with the Statuary. And that also makes it easier to replay Goose Mother if our opponent took it out. Then there's a Palladium Mirror to make two colorless mana, and Power Stone also to make double colorless once we untap with it. Then at the four mana there's a few more ramp cards. Invasion of Zendikar, finding two lands, transforming into the Skyclave. We've got some four mana sorceries, Migration Path and Vastwood Surge, which can also be kicked giving our team some plus one counters. And Knight of the Sweet's Revenge enters making a food token and then all our food tap to add green mana. So that can also be quite nice with a large Goose Mother, essentially giving us a bunch of extra mana to then replay it or cast some other expensive spells. And then for 7 mana we can sacrifice the enchantment and give our creatures plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is the number of foods we control. So that can also be a nice finisher if we've got a few creatures in play. Then there's the Archive tapping for double colorless, can also draw two cards. Nissa, of course, also very powerful in any green ramp deck. We've got plenty of forests to go with it. Lotus taps for three mana right away. And then we've got some cards that can also count as finishers. Primeval Titan finding two lands when it enters or attacks. So it can often find a Nykthos and perhaps a Castle Garenbrick to give us more mana. And then can also get some utility lands like the Bonders Enclave to draw extra cards. And then Old Gnawbone giving us additional treasures whenever we hit the opponent. Also quite nice with a large flying creature that can hit the opponent and then give us even more mana afterwards. And then we get to some of our card draw effects. Uro can also help us ramp and can also be escaped if we fill the graveyard for it. Shimmer Dragon can easily gain Hexproof in our deck with enough artifacts out and can then start tapping some of our untapped food tokens to draw even more cards. We've got Rishkar's Expertise as well as Last March of the Ends, which will look at our biggest creature to draw us a lot of cards. Last March also putting additional creatures in play, whereas Expertise can cast a spell with mana value 5 or less for free. Then the Mortal Sun will shut down all Planeswalkers, only really have Nyssa and Kiora, which can still provide a lot of value without activating, and then we'll also pump the team, draw extra cards, and then a Great Henge, of course, also quite nice with all these cheap mana creatures in the deck, and Hydroid Crisis, another excellent mana sink, very similar to the Goose Mother, and then the blue cards include Cyclonic Rift and River's Rebuke as one-sided bounce effects, we've got some extra turn cards with Time Warp, 
and Alred's Epiphany, and then even Karn's Temporal Sundering, which will require a legendary creature in play, but that's usually not too difficult with her Goose Mother. And then the Boots can also potentially give some of our larger creatures haste while protecting our key threats as well. And then our finishers also include Doubling Season, which is also particularly synergistic with the Goose Mother, doubling its plus one plus one counters, and also doubling our food tokens. Then there's Avoring Clanks getting two forests, eventually transforming into the Grand Evolution, can also be a nice way to close out the game. We've got Kogla, finding when it enters, destroying artifacts and enchantments when it attacks. Tooth and Nail when entwined can often close out the game, as we can simply get a Crater Hoof Behemoth and some other large creature and immediately attack for lethal. Then there's a Titan of Industry, destroying artifacts, enchantments, giving us shield counters, rhino tokens, or life gain. And then Cityscape Leveler, giving us even more interaction when we cast it, can destroy a non-land permanent, replacing it with a Power Stone, and can also unearth it. So there's definitely some more expensive cards we could be playing as additional finishers, thinking of the various Eldrazi, but because our Goose Mother already provides us with a win condition, we don't need to go overboard with the expensive cards, which could lead to some clunky opening hands, and instead we can focus on having lots of ramp, and then we already have kind of a mana sink to go with it. And then we mentioned most of the important lands in our mana base, plenty of dual lands of course, and then also snow-covered basics to go with our Into the North, could also play some other snow land payoffs if we wanted to, and then the channel lands offering a tiny bit more interaction. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the five-color shrine deck, and we've got an exciting turn one with Utopia Sprawl, would love to pick up some 2 or 3 mana ramp cards so we can set up our Lotus on the following turn. And then of course Titan into Tooth and Nail can win us the game. I'll give it a shot. Just need to find anything that accelerates our mana on the turns 2 or 3. And then our hand is quite strong. If not, we're still looking at a turn 4 Gilded Lotus. And then turn 5, do something powerful. Can play our Goose Mother in the meantime, just to spend our mana, since we've got some bombs in the late game. So the flexibility of Goose Mother is nice. Opponent with a Hallowed Fountain untapped. And what's next? Some 2 mana ramp card, perhaps? Explore. Okay, so our opponent's off to a decent start as well. Can see the Life's Origin next turn already. Authority. Makes our stuff come into play tapped. Okay, Invasion's not bad, can play that next turn. And then for now, play Goose Mother. Now our creatures entering tapped can actually be significant if we entwine Tooth and Nail, planning to get Crater Hoof Behemoth. Since then we may not have as much damage as we would otherwise. Now a 3-3 Goose Mother can also transform our Invasion of Zendikar at once. So that's nice. And a Lotus Cobra. Does not quite work out for me here. So get a bunch of islands. Attack, and we can sack our food to draw. Okay. So next turn we've got quite a bit of mana to work with. Could go for Lotus Cobra, play a land, and then play Primeval Titan, giving us a bunch of landfall triggers. And then try to entwine Tooth and Nail on the following turn. The White Hondon to gain life back is acceptable. So yeah, I'll stick to the plan. Cobra. Play a land, play Primeval Titan. These will enter tapped, so no real point in getting a fetch land like Fabled Passage. Nykthos seems like a good pick, and then Castle Garenbrig. And then I can still play Carrioted. And hit for 7. Okay, so we may have enough to still present lethal with an Entwined Tooth and Nail next turn. We'll see what happens. Opponent jumping could imply that a sweeper is incoming. In which case we'll have quite a bit of mana to sink into our Goose Mother once again. 
Thorn's Wrath. Yeah, clears everything except Primeval Titan. Could have been worse. But it does prevent lethal this turn. So... Activate Castle Garenbrig, and then... How much mana are we talking about? So, X equals uh, 7 for Goose Mother. Or we can play Lotus first, adding a bit more mana. And then still play Goose Mother for X equals uh, 2 plus 3 is 5. attack. And then I could get some more utility lands, Enclave, and uh, maybe a Breeding Pool. So we don't have to pay two life later. Okay, so Entwine Tooth and Nail should be pretty effective, even if it's not necessarily lethal on the spot with the uh, authority. Alright, farewell. So that's another setback. Back to the command zone. Alright, I guess we'll tooth and nail with Entwine and see what we can get. And then I could keep Enclave untapped, in case I can draw with it. Okay, so Cityscape Leveler could be effective. Titan of Industry can blow up an enchantment as well. Those are some of the highlights. Uro, not quite as good now that uh, graveyards have been cleared, or have they? I guess we still have a few cards in graveyards. They didn't exile those. Leveler is only on cast that it destroys stuff. So I think I like Titan. And then maybe... Could go for Old Gnawbone to generate a bunch of mana, or Coglan, which can also repeatedly destroy artifacts and enchantments when attacking. The combination of Gnawbone and Shimmer Dragon could be fun to draw a bunch of cards. Could still take Shimmer Dragon, next turn cast a Goose Mother, and then kind of go off. Yeah, don't hate that idea. Put these in play. And then let's go with shield counter and destroy an enchantment. And at this point we'll make it the uh, Honden. And shield counter on Shimmer Dragon, hope they can't exile it. And then I can still draw with Enclave. Okay, time warp should be effective. So the plan next turn is to sink a bunch of mana into Goose Mother. Still leaving enough mana for Time Warp. Sanctum of All is quite scary if that gets going. So let's see here. Can uh, activate Castle. Activate Nykthos, which makes a tiny bit of extra mana. So then we still have 3, 4, 5 for Time Warp. I guess I should make a blue mana here. Okay, so Goose Mother costing 6, so X equals 5. And then we can use Shimmer Dragon to draw. Cultivate. Yeah, I'll still Time Warp. attack. So our opponent should be able to survive on the board. Still at 19. They've got a creature that can block. So let's see if we can find something to take them out. Mindstone can also draw with the Shimmer Dragon without needing to sacrifice it. Can um, maybe fetch before drawing. Don't think the landfall matters anymore. And just a land. And then I guess draw with Enclave. 
and an Immortal Sun's not bad. Play that attack. Sack a food token. So Shimmer Dragon still has X proof. And then hopefully Sanctum of All is not going to be too devastating. Goins at 5. Thin out to deck some more. Don't have any creature lines to get with Into the North. Faceless Haven, of course, would be an option. Okay. Let's see what they get. Possible they need some card draw here, so they'll get the blue Sanctum to try and draw into another Sweeper. But if it doesn't exile, Shimmer Dragon has a shield counter on it. So yeah, Sanctum of Calm Waters. Two Shrines, so draw two discard. So one card left. What's it gonna be? Cleansing Nova? Yeah, that was a sweeper, but uh, Shimmer Dragon prevails. And now we can just close out the game with a simple attack. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Smeagol, Helpful Guide. And we're off to a nice start with a early Utopia Sprawl. You can also play turn 1 Mystic, since Utopia Sprawl can immediately provide extra mana. Although also more susceptible to removal, of course. It's gonna be a Shambling Ghast. Okay, play Utopia Sprawl. Naming blue. And then we'll wait one more turn to play Goose Mother, so we can make it a little bit larger to try and set up a powerful Rishkar's expertise. Since, uh, yeah, that's going to be in two turns, assuming Mystic survives. And now with Fraxin Tower, it's probably not going to if the opponent gives minus one, minus one. Okay, bit of a setback. Hope to find a different ramp card. But Smeagol will find a land here. And just a land of the top. Okay, so Goose Mother X equals 2. And then we'll still have to wait another turn for Rishkar's expertise. So hopefully we can find something else in the meantime. Colony Garden they can sacrifice to Frexian Tower, trigger Smeagol once again. And a Liberator is next. Okay. Uro is not bad. So can play it. Fabled Passage also has good synergy with it. So play Uro. We'll attack with the Goose Mother. Sack the food. And Soaring City we can still channel here. And the next turn we can easily escape Uro thanks to all the cards the opponent put in our graveyard. Okay, we'll pass. Do we bounce Liberator? Do we bounce Smeagol? I'm guessing a Liberator here. Might have wanted to bounce before they attacked since they switched it to being the ring bearer. So now they get to draw and discard. And our opponent can ninjutsu the liberator after all. Sacrifice it to replace Smeagol and get the trigger. Now they're going to be a mana short, unless they've got a land. Okay. Checks out. Dark Ritual can maybe set up something else. Smeagol plus two mana for maybe removal. Edict. Okay, so... Wouldn't be casting the Expertise, but was probably planning to escape Uro anyways. Could have left Goose Mother in the graveyard to then exile it, but it's not like we lack things 
to exile. Okay, so let's go ahead and use the fetch land. Nykthu still doesn't generate any additional mana. Devotion still only two. So we can play Signets. Okay, if we can cast our Expertise next turn, that would be nice. Breach the Multiverse. I guess I should have paid more attention to what cards I exiled with Uro to get rid of the more powerful creatures, but I don't think there were any. Opponent hit a Titan of Industry, and Kiora to draw an extra card. Pretty good. Goes after Arcane Signets. And a Thought Seize to take away either Crasis or Expertise. Goes for Expertise. So don't have a great attack with Uro. Let's get okay, River's Rebuke would get our Kiora back, so that's kind of nice. And then Uro gets to attack as well. So that seems worthwhile. Hoping to find a land so we can still play Kiora. And a Primeval Titan is next, always powerful. Alright, so we could be in a bit of trouble here. Pujuka Bog to exile my graveyard. So escaping Uro a second time is going to be tough. So for now, attack with Uro, see what we get. Opponent takes a trade. And then don't mind playing Kiora. And then sinking a bunch of mana into Hydroid Crisis after untapping Utopia Sprawl. So X equals 6. Okay, so we've got a bunch of cards to work with. They can still replay Titan, which lines up quite well against our 6-6. Cottage is going to get in there, so they must have removal as well here. Just a virtue of persistence, so they can exile Uro. Fair enough. So Hydroid's still alive. And our opponent passes. Okay. So how do we want to start our turn? Can try and increase my devotion to green. And then I guess we'll have to tap Nykthos. And then I can untap Nykthos with Kiora to make some more mana. Okay, so we can still play Shimmer Dragon here if we'd like, although it would not have Hexproof yet. Mindstone into Shimmer Dragon, still only have the one artifact. So maybe we want to cast a Goose Mother here. Could also attack the Invasion first to get one more mana, and then we'll get to draw with Kiora. That's pretty nice. I 
I guess the backside of Invasion doesn't provide the Devotion anymore, so we lost out on that. But now Gilded Lotus gives us some more mana to work with, so don't mind that. And then just wait a turn to deploy Goose Mother with a bunch of food, which can then draw with a Shimmer Dragon. Titan of Industry is back. Can destroy Lotus. Goes for Statuary instead. Okay. So let's start with the Goose Mother, making at least two food if possible. And then we can tap Nykthos afterwards, maybe untap it with Kiora, although then we would lose our card draw engine, which may not be worth it. So. Yeah, let's make a bunch of mana here. So this is Goose Mother X equals 8. And then we can still play Shimmer Dragon. And now it's going to have Hexproof. And we can start drawing. And play Karyotid, I suppose. Or we can play Troyon thanks to the Skyclave. Probably won't be attacking into the Titan. And we'll keep Kiora around. So we've got a pretty impressive board state. Hopefully we can keep it. And that school is fine. Titan now a level 4 ring bear. So it may be time to let Kiora go. Since it tramples, it's going to be tricky to block. And we would lose all our creatures in the process. So our opponent is pretty vulnerable on the way back now. Can I have a look at their graveyard. Fate from history, they discarded earlier. A replicating ring, opponent sacrificed Titan, so probably gonna see a sweeper here. Or a reanimation spell. Conquest, getting back Titan. And primeval Titan, okay, double Titan. So they can blow up my Gilded Lotus this time. But we still have Hexproof on the Shimmer Dragon. And plenty of artifacts to draw cards with. Goose Mother can start attacking. And uh, yeah, we're pretty likely to find something else exciting. Temple to Scry. And a Muta Vault. Alright, so step one. A draw tapping artifacts. Gnawbone's nice. So if we can connect with Goose Mother with a Gnawbone in play, then we would get a million treasure tokens, which can then translate into more cards with Shimmer Dragon and our opponent concede. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the first sliver, five color good stuff typically. Could also be, of course, a sliver creature deck. Our hand leaves a bit to be desired. Not a lot of forests to go with Nyssa, lots of six drops. So this is a bit sketchy if we don't find a few lands or cheaper ramp cards. This is better. Got Signets. Turn 3, Knight of Sweets Revenge, and then a big Goose Mother, perhaps. And then with the extra food, we could still maybe play and equip the boots. Opponent is on just a Sliver Creature deck. Yeah, missing the River's Rebuke now, but that's okay. Could have saved Fabled Passage to enable Landfall twice, but also don't mind thinning out a deck, since we don't need more lands. And our plays are pretty scripted in the next few turns. Play Signets, 
play Revenge. And then the Goose Mother. Take three for now. Opponent has First Strike and Vigilance to all their slivers. And now Unearth two. Okay, Troyon's interesting. I think I still like Knight of Sweets Revenge here. And then maybe next turn, wait a turn on Goose Mother. Play Troyon and the Boots. And then we can protect it as well. And next turn we're going to see the first sliver. Krasis is also an interesting draw. So let's say we play Troyon, tapping this for green mana. Play the boots, equip. And then wouldn't be able to really use it for much else. Unless we wanted to play Goose Mother just as a 2-2 uh, flyer. But that doesn't seem worth it. And then next turn we can sink a bunch of mana into Goose Mother, which then gives us more mana for larger Hydroid Crisis. Never mind, Crisis is gone. But we also don't need to face a first sliver. A Glade Walker. Counter on Sentinel. And then probably just take three. Okay, a large Goose Mother it is. And then... How much mana are we talking about? Double tap Q to float all our mana. So it's a little complicated with all the snow mana here. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. X equals seven. Make some food and then we can still move the boots. Attack for nine. And we'll draw a card here. Find a gross spiral. And then next turn we could also look into sacrificing Knight of Sweets Revenge. For now we're facing a first sliver, hoping it doesn't cascade into anything too powerful. E to Extinction can go after Troyon. So we have four food. So I guess we would be one short of presenting Lethal with the Goose Mother. Might have been a reason not to sacrifice my food last turn. Now I can also gain a bunch of life back if needed. Old Knobbone, that'll do it. So play it, give it haste. And then we would have a ton of treasure here to spend as well. But 16 in the air will be enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and up against Atraxa, the uh, four mana variant. So proliferate deck. Our hand's not bad. Turn two into the north. And then we can play Haven plus Kiora in the same turn. Now I'm also considering Summerwald Sage, even though it's more vulnerable to removal. It does add 3 mana. But Haven plus Kiora is also kind of synergistic here. So that seems good. Should have been prioritizing playing Forest since we do have Nissa in the deck. So don't quite have enough mana to play Sage afterwards. But next turn we can play Knights plus Sage, setting up for a huge Goose Mother. Our opponent getting their colors sorted. And an Arset's next, so that can prevent some card draw, which is annoying. Makes our cure a bit worse, and of course Goose Mother if we're planning to sack a food. So I could play Goose Mother to try and pressure Narsets. Or I can just keep developing my mana and hope to find some other curve topper that we can use instead. Chromatic Lantern is next. 
and our set minuses. Still at one loyalty is pretty effective when Sage doesn't have any power. And they did find an Edict, so that can take care of Kiora now. Fair enough. Cyclonic Rift could bounce Narset, but now we don't mind as much. So we'll just uh, cast the biggest Goose Mother possible. And then we'll have a bunch of food left over, even if they have removal for it. So X equals 9. And then we technically still have 5 green mana available. Could sack the Wolf Hollow Haven, which I don't mind, so we have something to pressure Narset if they answer the Goose Mother. And also something we can now pump with Knight of Sweet's Revenge. Giving plus 6 plus 6 to the team. Definitely adds up. It's gonna be a kicked Skyclave Relic. Making some tokens. So Cyclonic Rifts is looking reasonable. We could rift with Overload before attacking, so I can sack a food to draw. Or we can take out Narset and then Cyclonic Rift, so they can't replay it. But let's do some math first. We've got six food. So if we were to activate Knight of Sweet's Revenge, we've got 13 plus 18. That's uh, 31. So yeah, that would just be game here. So let's go for it. And we want to tap all the food tokens here while they produce mana. And hope our opponent doesn't have a fatal push in hand. And smash. So I'm not gonna sack a food, and our opponent explodes. Awesome. The revenge was had. Okay, we're on the play, facing Korvold, sacrifice deck. Our hand has potential. Turn to Troyon thanks to Gilded Goose. And then play Goose Mother. Hope to draw a few more lands in the process. But then we've got some good curve toppers with Krasis and Last March. Turn one Grazer from the opponent, so they're also ramping nicely. Knight of Sweet's Revenge is going to be pretty effective. But we'll need to get our mana going first. Can't use Troyon to cast a Knight of Sweet's Revenge. Iron Crag is next. And we could cast Krasis for X equals 2, only draw one card. I think we prefer Goose Mother at that point. X equals 2. So we get a food for Gilded Goose. And have a larger Goose Mother as well. A Veil of Summer just to draw a card. Soul of Wind Grace has a fetch land to return. So we're in a bit of trouble here, stuck on two lands. If I play Sylvala, I guess her opponent doesn't get to immediately draw an extra card with it, and then next turn it can generate a bit of extra mana. So that may be the play. I do have to sack my food to cast it. And Troyon's not doing much for us. Could also activate it to. Draw and discard, hope to draw land, which we may need now to stand a chance. Alright, found it. Don't think this is a matchup for the boots. Seems a bit slow here to get going. And then play Sylvala over Iron Crag. So next turn we can actually cast a substantial crisis. And I'll hit for four, I guess. Since I don't really want to trade for Soul of Windgrace, since we need our four-powered creature for Sylvala. Put on sacking the Expanse, so they probably don't have an untapped land to play a Corvold first. 
But now they get the fetch line back with Soul of Wind Grace. And the one ring is next. At least they can't activate it right away. Now that it's been nerfed. Old Knobbone we could play. That seems strong. Draws a card. And then we can immediately make four treasure unless they chump. Which I guess our opponent will. And then I suppose we can play the Iron Crag first. Find a land. So let's attack. Opponent takes it. I guess with the one ring we don't actually make any treasure. Fair enough. Opponent goes digging, so they're not playing Corvold yet. Would love to untap with Old Gnawbone and cast our last march. And Deadly Dispute keeps digging. Mindstone's fine. Two mana left here. And we get to untap, perfect. So let's cast our last march. And then we'll still have a bunch of mana available. Now, interestingly, I don't think we put any creatures in play, since we want to get more value from our Great Henge. And then we can play some more mana creatures. Could also attack first, since uh, we'll get to make some treasure here. So we'll get four treasure. Now it's only food tokens that tap for green. So maybe we can wait on the revenge and just play the creatures for now. And our opponent could easily have a sweeper here, but at least we'll draw a few cards in the process. So play Karyotid. And then we can still activate Troyon as well. Which we can do at instant speed. Okay, plenty of lands we can discard. Opponent goes digging. Corvold's fine. Sacrificing the One Ring makes sense. It's provided its value. But yeah, the Thermorphic Expanse not quite as good as the fetch lands that sacrifice themselves right away. So end of turn, we get to draw and discard. And a Titan of Industry is not bad either. Okay, so where do we begin? Maybe with a big attack, could Knight of the Sweet's Revenge, but we won't have a lot of food to go with it. So maybe it's okay to start with Titan of Industry. And then 4-4 four, four Rhino plus Shield Counter. If I put a Shield Counter on one of my existing creatures, our opponent can just destroy it in response. So there's probably no point, we'll protect Titan itself. And the Reverse Rebuke. Alright, if we can cast that, it should be pretty much game. As we would also generate all the treasure in the world. Putin has already cast our Veil of Summer. Corvold goes digging.
And that does it. River's Rebuke claims another victim. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Chandra, Hope's Beacon, so a red control strategy. Our hand seems good. Turn to Cold Steel Hearts, prioritize playing Forests for Nyssa. And then can play Haven plus Iron Crag. Setting up a large Goose Mother, maybe playing Nyssa first as well. Okay, Rahilda is something we'll want to try and block, but can't really do so unless we play Goose Mother. But it would only be a 4-4, so they can still pretty easily kill it. So I think we just keep developing our mana. And then play another Forests. And pass. Have a Boseju at the ready. It looks like they've got some artifact removal. It's too bad. Poseidon cannot target our own stuff. Still have an island to make blue mana. And Rahilda finds Cultivate. Could play an Invasion, or we can play Nyssa. Still probably play Invasion, although, let's see here. So, play Island. So yeah, we can play Nyssa, untap the forest, play Invasion, but I wouldn't be able to attack it as well, which would have been the ultimate goal. Yeah, in that case I'll still go for the Invasion of Zendikar after attacking for three. The land fights for us. Just in case our opponents go to Stone Rain, I'll get one more island. And then hopefully they can't finish off Nyssa. And then next turn sink our mana into Goose Mother. Opponent does have a Field of Ruin, but we enchanted our basic land. Always a good habit. Finds a Lotus. Luckily they can't cast that one yet. Goes for Cultivate. So next turn we will see Chandra most likely. But Nyssa's going to be out of range. Start by attacking the Invasion of Zendikar. Play Boseju. And if we want to go for maximum mana, I guess we would be untapping the Wolf Hollow Haven land, even though it's going to be susceptible to removal next turn. Rise, my elemental friend. And then X equals 15. That's one large goose. 1717. Do we want to transform Iron Crag? Sure. Six mana. And an explosion. Awesome. Yeah, Goose Mother does not mess around. It's good as kind of an early play if we don't have anything else going on, but also perfect to sink all your mana into. And then even if the opponent removes it a few times, we can still replay it and uh, keep making food which can hopefully synergize with a few other cards in our deck. So yeah, Goose Mother has been very good to me, haven't dropped a game since playing it, and we've been playing it for quite some time here. So overall, been quite impressed by this commander. Of course, Blue-Green remains one of the better archetypes in Historic Brawl, because we've got so many powerful cards, Got a lot of 1 and 2 mana ramp options, making the deck a lot more consistent than maybe some other archetypes. And then it's just a matter of picking your finishers to close out the game. And with Goose Mother filling the role of a finisher, we don't need to have as many expensive cards in the rest of our deck, giving us more room for even more ramp cards. So the deck is quite consistent at getting us to a big Goose Mother in the late game. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.